pain and adversity are inescapable. Suffering and victimhood are a choice. So what I learned about pain is that the pain is pain. It hurts. But the suffering comes from the brain that is screaming, I can't take it anymore. It's not fair. Why me? I don't deserve it. You know? That voice inside the head is the suffering. The sensation in the body is the pain. Those are two different things. And there was so much pain that the mind got just tired of like crying. And when the voice stopped crying, the pain remained alone without the suffering. Actually, it's much easier to tolerate pain if you don't feel so sorry for yourself. It's a much better strategy because when we have adversity, if we resist it, it just becomes worse. You know, if we deal with it, it's actually a right livelihood. We cannot choose what comes, but we can deal with it. So I was on my uh, knees and elbows, but I wasn't a broken person. My spirit was strong and I had no intention to give up. Uh, um, but then an airplane suddenly passed in the sky. 17 days I'm alone in the forest. The moment that airplane passed, I was, I mean, I, I, I immediately knew that the airplane came after me. So I jumped on my feet and I started running and screaming, but because the flood pushed me deep into the woods under the canopies, there was no way I could wave. I was away from the river and the airplane just passed fast and oblivious to my misery just disappeared. That surge of hope was the worst thing that I can experience. That actually broke me. So after 17 days of surviving, I just collapsed. That moment where the airplane passed there in the sky, it just something snapped inside me and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I started crying, it was the first time. So I cried and cried and there was a lot of release. And then I heard from the depths of my soul, a prayer rising, which was, God, please let me die. You know, like I just gave up on life. I really gave up on life. It's, it's not that I wanted to die, I wanted to rest. And I knew that there'll be the only rest I can have is, is if I die. And I was longing, I gave up. And that's an amazing, Kelly, thank you for, for that, because that's really a moment in this story that is also for me always like so emotional and incredible. It is incredible. I gave up on life, but the amazing thing is that life didn't give up on me. And what happened, it may sound, you know, like really impossible, but suddenly somebody else was crying next to me. And I heard clearly that there's somebody else crying. So it was so shocking. I left my head, I left, lifted my head from the mud and I saw a young woman lying next to me crying. I was shocked for a second, but then like in a flash, I had a realization, this airplane may come back. So we still have a chance if we make it to the river. So I started screaming at her, get up, get up, we cannot cry now. And I pulled her from the mud and I started running with her, pushing her to get to the river quickly if the airplane will return. For two entire days, I spoke to her, I pushed her, I talked to her, whatever it took, screaming, begging, just keep on moving until we'll find an opening. Because of all the floods, there's no playas, there's no beaches because the water just covers the, all the playas, so there's no opening and I was walking along the river now just searching for an opening so we can, if another airplane passes for two days and then at night, by night what I would do, I would lie between the, the roots of a buttress tree and I would clean the rot and I'll break some, I, I put some fresh leaves and then I'll break some palm fronds to cover myself. That night and mind you, this was the 18th night. After the flood, there was no food. Until the flood, I found a raw egg or a fruit that fell. But after the flood, the floor of the jungle was washed. So there was no food whatsoever. And by that stage, I was just uh, skin hanging on bones. It was like nothing left for me. But, and I was all one big open wound because I was wet all the time and nothing healed because of uh, um, the humidity. And then I find myself that I chose a wider tree and I made a camp for two people. And I'm calling that girl to come closer to me. And then I realize there's nobody there. And it shocked me because this wasn't like in my head, like I built a camp for her. Um, so I, I thought I'm losing my mind and I got scared. But you know, like that story is for me is like something quite incredible because 
my explanation to it it's it, that it was just imagination. So I don't, you know, some people here said, oh, an angel came or whatever. It wasn't just imagination. I explain it, you know. But what I know, and that's the amazing part, it wasn't my imagination. I didn't make it up. You know, I was lying there crying, praying to die. Suddenly, this girl appears. So if she is imagination, who imagined her? You know? And I cannot answer this question, you know? And the other thing that is maybe my biggest enlightenment from this story is that that girl saved my life. And that's the secret. She saved my life because she needed me. She didn't help me, <laughs> you know? She didn't come to help me, but she needed my help. I couldn't take care of myself anymore, but the moment somebody needed me, I found the power. And then I realized that actually true power is revealed when we give it to others. As long as we're self-serving, we're strong, but we don't know the true meaning of power. When we start giving that power to others, then true power um, is revealed to us.